and then the kneecap in the front of the knee uh, or the patella. And the kneecap's job is really to protect the knee, but from a physics standpoint, what the patella is doing is increasing the amount of force that the quadriceps can exert uh, across the knee. And how does it do it? It does it through this patellar tendon. So the patellar tendon is just the muscle's attachment to the tibia bone that helps the muscle actually extend the knee joint or straighten it. Similarly, on the ankle side of things, the Achilles tendon is the biggest, strongest uh, tendon in our body, and it helps exert force from the calf muscles uh, to, to the heel bone, and that's involved with uh, jumping and any time we push off or take a stride. <laughs> so looking at some of the definitions, as I mentioned, so we have this term tendinopathy, which we uh, use now to describe tendon pain. And really, it's just a clinical term to describe uh, symptoms related to the tendon. Uh, we ter previously used terms such as tendinitis, and now we tend to favor tendinopathy, and we'll get into uh, why that is in a little bit. But again, a common problem is estimated in that same study, about 28 million people in the United States uh, suffered from tendinopathy. Um, the more active we are, the more we tend to see these symptoms. And so we've seen this in uh, high uh, prevalence in professional athletes, but also in recreational athletes and those who perform repetitive work, uh, particularly upper extremity type of work where we may see issues such as tennis elbow commonly. One study found that this accounts for 30 to 50% of all uh, sports injuries. And in this talk, again, we're going to focus on two in particular. Um, we're going to look at patellar and Achilles tendinopathy. So the way we've approached this has really evolved over uh, the past several decades and certainly even during my career from the time I started training to now the way that we think about and treat uh, tendon disease has changed. Um, we use these terms interchangeably and so in the literature you may hear tendonitis and we've all probably heard of tendonitis but also the terms tendinopathy and tendinosis. And so as I said how we think about the problem has changed and how we think about the cause of the pain has changed and therefore our treatments have evolved. So if we step back for a second and look at the difference, we'll see that it follows uh, an evolution of the, the model of how we think about things. So tendonitis was a term that was uh, used previously to describe this and will still be used at times. And so prior to the 1990s, the model of tendon pain was really an inflammation-based model where tendonitis was the term used because itis means inflammation. And so because we thought the main cause was inflammation, the treatment was aimed at decreasing inflammation, uh, essentially treating this with anti-inflammatories. In the 1990s, studies started to be done where people looked at um, the type of tissue that comes out of samples. For instance, when we do a surgery to remove some of this diseased tissue, it was shown that there's actually very few inflammatory cells in that tissue, and that maybe this is not an inflammatory problem. So in the late 1990s, the terminology started to shift to that of tendinopathy, uh, which simply means disease of the tendon, more so than an inflammation process. So by the 2000s, there's really this shift looking at the difference between tendinitis and more of a degenerative process or what we call tendinosis. So the term tendinosis is really talking about the breaking down and the deterioration of the actual structure of the tendon. So if we take a look at some of the slides here on the side here, what we're looking at in slide A is the normal appearance of a tendon under the microscope. And so what we'd expect to see is nice linear organized fibers here. And what can happen over time is they can break down into this disorganized structure here where we see these large cells and no real fiber structure. Uh, and that corresponds to sort of a scar-like tissue that you would see with the naked eye looking at this. And so further than just thinking about the change with inflammation to more of a degenerative process, um, work has also been done to show that this is really a continuum working through various stages of degeneration.